Ladies and gentlemen, we have a little bit of catching up to do on this project. As you can see, it is pretty much all the way back together, but what you last saw is that we had painted the engine bay in this nice gray color that we sourced from good old Walmart. I think it came out pretty well, and as you can see, everything's back together already. Now, some of the things that we are doing differently on this car, which is different than any other 4200 project that we've done, is we are one, running methanol and no intercooler, and that's gonna have some challenges that we need to uh, work through and learn, but there's gonna be a lot of payoffs there as well. Another thing that we are doing differently is we are running a completely solid valve train. Now, in most engines that come from the factory, they have some sort of hydraulic in the valve train, which basically takes up any lash from wear or heat expansion and keeps your valve train components tight up against the camshaft so that it doesn't make any noise and wears nice and evenly. The problem with that is you're relying on a hydraulic component which can compress to keep very good control of your valve. As you get to higher horsepower levels and higher RPM levels, that becomes a bit of a challenge just because you're smashing that valve so many times per second that it's difficult for that hydraulic system to keep up. Therefore, in many race applications, people eliminate that hydraulic component from your valve train and go with something that cannot move, i.e. a solid piece of metal. The problem with that is you still need to deal with that thermal expansion which may occur in your engine. Therefore, you set it so that it's a little bit loose when it's cold and as it expands, it will tighten up and hopefully at the operating condition where it will be running primarily, it is tight and doesn't make any noise or have any reliability issues. What people have seen from deleting the hydraulic system in their engines is that the engine will make more horsepower at higher RPMs, which is something that you really want for a stock bottom end, like what we are running on this build. Ideally, with a stock bottom end, your goal is to make your horsepower at as high of an RPM as you can without getting into the RPM limitations of your components. Therefore, we decided to convert to a totally solid valve train. Now, in most engines that you convert to a solid valve train, 
they have adjustment, meaning somewhere between where the camshaft lobe moves and where the valve gets pressed down, there is some sort of adjustable screw and lock nut or something of that sort. In the case of the 4200, there are no components like that that exist on the market. I believe that they could be manufactured, but they would be very pricey to do so. And I don't know if there's really a demand for that. The nice thing is these engines share a lot of components with their little brother, the Ecotec. The valve train is almost identical to the Ecotec and therefore a lot of the parts that have been developed for them can be transferred over. Unfortunately, in their case, most of the time they go to a totally solid latch adjuster. It's really nice to have adjustment there because if something wears and you need to uh, adjust something a little bit, you have the ability to do so. Or if you wanna drive it on the street, you can lash it up tight and take it down the road. In our case, we don't have that option. So I found a company called Skunk Works, which offers a solid lash adjuster for the Ecotech. And I purchased a set of 24 for around $550. This is definitely very pricey, so I, I, I hope that it actually makes a difference, but the fun didn't stop there. The problem is you need to set the height of this lash adjuster. You do this by cutting it on the lathe and gradually shortening it to the correct length. The problem is you need to be within a couple thousands in order to get the lash just right. This is an extremely tedious process and my dad and I have around 17 hours of our time setting the lash of all the lash adjusters. We spent a ton of time getting the setting just right on every single lash adjuster and in a lot of cases you know we might have trimmed it too long or too short and it was uh, easier to transfer it over to another position. We were able to get everything within four to six thousandths of lash at the camshaft lobe. Part of me hopes this makes absolutely no difference over the hydraulic valve train just because I don't want to do it again. That being said, the other part of me is really hoping that it makes 50 more horsepower and we can get to our goals that much more easily with this project. But none of that means anything unless we prove that it makes more power on the dyno, which we plan to do in the very near future. Now you're gonna notice that a lot of the wiring is already done on this project. And I'm not really gonna go over that today because I wanna do a entire video dedicated to that process. A lot of you have asked me to do that in the past and I think this is finally an opportunity to do that. So make sure you stay tuned for that in a future video. Now, before we wrap up today, I wanna to just go through and say thanks to everybody that's helped out on this project. I wanna say a huge thanks to Monkey Fab Garage for providing all of the fittings, as well as the merge pipe for the cold side of the turbo system. Next, I wanna say a huge thanks to Snake Eater Performance for providing the genuine Bosch 210 pound per hour fuel injectors that we are using in our methanol system. If you guys don't know, Snake Eater is now offering genuine Bosch injectors, and unlike a lot of companies, they actually properly flow match the Bosch injectors on a test bench that can actually handle a large injector. If you're gonna get a Bosch injector, they're the guys to go with. Next, I wanna say a big thanks to our friends at Firepower Race Coils for providing the ignition coils for this build. As you've seen in the past, we have used these coils on other builds, and that has been one of the keys to make 800 plus horsepower with these engines. Last, I wanna say a huge thanks to our friends at Black Sheep for providing the very fancy mechanics blow off valve. With that, I'm gonna end the video off here. I wanna say a big thanks to everybody that's been following this. We've been seeing a lot of positive feedback from you guys in the comments, and I just wanna say thanks for watching all of the videos. I'm really looking forward to showing you guys what this thing's capable of, and we're closing in very quickly to the first startup. But to be one of the first people to see that, make sure that you tune into our live stream, which will be happening today. Hopefully we'll be starting around noon, but keep an eye out for a notification on the subscription page. Looking forward to seeing you guys all on there. Make sure that you like and subscribe. Consider hitting the join button down below and becoming a channel member. Leave a comment and we'll see you in the next one.